Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an ETL package that imports the data from the CSV data source. So we've got here in our data source, we've got this crime 2006 to 2008 crime data right here. And this is just in a tabular format. It's in a CSV file. And we're going to import this as is into our staging table. And um, if we take a closer look at our staging table that we created in a previous video, let's take a look here. We see that the staging table, open up columns, it has its own primary key column. So we're going to create our own key column. We also are going to import the source row ID, which comes from the source system, the state, and then we've got this state ID, which as the data comes in from the CSV, this state ID will be used later in the process as we're generating our dimension tables. You'll see how that gets used. So we also have the city ID prepared and the year ID. These three columns do not exist in the source data. The rest of this does. The only thing that we did a little bit different <clears throat> and we had to have some knowledge of the source data was we decided in our table design that state could hold up to 50 right here byte characters. So we have the var car 50, but the city we put as 100 because some city names can be quite large, larger than what you think. So we just sort of overestimated and made that 100. And you'll see how that uh, affects things as we import data from the, um, from the source tabular data set inside the CSV. So let's get started in the ETL process. So we've got an instance of SQL Server data tools which essentially is a set of business intelligence templates that reside inside of Visual Studio. So in this case, we're using Visual Studio 2017 SQL Server data tools because we're working with SQL Server 2017. So no matter what version you're using of SQL Server, it's always a good idea to match the SQL Server data tools version with the compatible version of SQL Server. So here we're going to create a new SQL Server Integration Services package. So I'm going to click New Project. And here we've got different project choices under the, the Business Intelligence templates. And specifically, we're going to choose Integration Services. So Integration Services is the workflow engine provided by SQL Server that allows us to work with the ETL process or the extraction transformation loading process for data marts within a data warehouse. So I'm just going to change the directory where I'm going to create this. So I'm just going to put it in a working directory I have for this course. And <clears throat> so I'll just put it, really, I'll just create one here. Um, I'll just select that folder for now. And actually, instead of 4300, let's put it in side of 4402. And I'm going to put it in right here in fall 2018. And we're just going to call this Crime Data Mart. And I'm just going to call my package learning for now. I leave this checked for create directory for the solution. I chose the very first template here. And I say, OK, so it's going to create a package file, a .dtsx file over here to the left. And it's going to load a series of tools. And we'll go over how those tools will be used during the development process. <clears throat> so we've got the package opened up by default. It is called package.dtsx by default. We could change its name if we wanted to for the name of the package. And notice that in the Solution Explorer, that's under SSIS Packages. And the two main areas that we're going to look at here is we've got what's called a control flow layer to the package. 
and then the data flow layer. We start with our package in this example at the control flow layer and there's two common tasks that are often used for the ETL uh, portion of the package where we're going to populate the staging table we're going to use the data flow task there's also this execute SQL tasks now there are, are other types of tasks that we could use for instance if we were working with the Hadoop file system or other uh, types of databases perhaps uh, files from FTP servers whatnot but we're just going to work right here with moving data from some type of data source to a destination so I'm going to click this data flow task I could click and drag and drop it on my design surface and when it creates that con control flow I'm just going to rename it and we're going to call this extract um, transform load data from CSV to staging okay um, a lot of times when you name this certain characters it doesn't like when you name it but it's always a good idea and best practice to name the the steps in your workflow so it's inside the control flow layer of the package now if I double click on this it goes inside the data flow layer and notice that over here on the left the controls change uh, because these are data flow tasks that are available to the control flow task that we've added to our design surface we know that we are working with the control flow right here extract transform load data from CSV to staging because it's selected right here from this down arrow drop down and that's the only thing we've got so far in our package so again if I go back to control flow I could double click and it takes me in this design space now we have nothing in here so the first thing I want to do is get data from my CSV file and if you look over here um, down in our toolbox we could use this wizard but what I'm gonna do is point you right to a source so the first thing we're gonna do is get data from a source and then we're going to perform a transformation so we go through the extraction the transformation and then we're going to load it into the staging table into a destination so I'm going to come under here under other sources and we've got uh, some different types of data sources under other and we've got one called flat file source so if I drag this over to my design space I can define a connection it's also called a connection manager which you'll see down here below and I'm gonna call this my CSV data source as my flat file source when I double click on this each one of these tools that come from the toolbox in SSIS are gonna have a different setup wizard for them to configure so I'm gonna double click on that now in this wizard here it's going to give me an opportunity to define my connection or my connection manager to my flat file so what I'm going to do is click on new and when I do that flat files are defined here as either text files or CSVs there's also an other but ours is a CSV so the first thing I want to do is name my flat file connection manager and I'm just going to call this connection to source CSV and I could put a description connects to the source data I could put whatever I want there now I'm gonna browse for my file I'm gonna click browse now by default it's looking for txt files so I'm gonna change it to a CSV and I already have downloaded the source data in a folder here called crime data mark files and it's right here and so when I select that CSV file it's now can read the file and I need to do a little bit of configuration here of my extraction tool uh, when I connect to my source data the first thing that I know is I want to add a text qualifier uh, essentially what this is saying is that whenever the tool recognizes text inside of my my source data I can just put 
basically one double quote. So it's very difficult to see, but that's just one double quote that I'm putting there. So I'm just holding shift and then a double quote. And what that does is it's looking to see that if there is text encapsulated or surrounded by double quotes, it will interpret that as a single piece of data rather than two separate pieces of data by some chance that let's say that there's one column that has last name comma first name instead of it's a comma separated um, text file or CSV it wouldn't interpret those as two separate fields it would interpret them as one single uh, column and right here the CRLF is the default and that that delimits a, a single row of data by a carriage return line feed and I know that my data the very first row includes the names of the columns so I'm gonna leave that checked if it didn't I would change that and I'm gonna click on columns and you will see right away that this tool has interpreted the first row as the column headers and you can see that they've all been populated and all of the data below that has been populated based off the definition of the CSV you will see that the column delimiter by default for a CSV is a comma there are others but this one is a comma delimited file I'm then going to go to my advanced tab now here's the important thing to know about the advanced tab one of the things that we noticed in our source data was that the city accepts a hundred characters so it's often a good practice to match um, the size of your characters with the size uh, of the target uh, from the source with the size of the target and we could do that at different stages probably the most important thing to remember with that is that right here for each of these they come in by default the data type as strings with a length of 50 now since it is possible that a city can be more than 50 characters if I left the default as 50 it would truncate some of the data so I want to change that to a hundred now this is isn't necessarily a transformation period we could in our steps we could actually uh, identify and change the data type if we wanted here but sometimes that's difficult to troubleshoot so oftentimes in this first step we'll import it as a string so here we'll leave the rest of them as default string 50 and we'll add a transformation after this so essentially what's going to happen is the step is going to absorb the data from the CSV and it's going to bring it in so that we can do something with it in the next step of the workflow so I'm gonna say okay to this I could also do a preview if I wanted and I'm just gonna say okay to this and so what that does is down below it creates the connection manager and this step is now defined and based off this connection manager down below so the next thing that I want to do is I want to do some transformation and um, I, a common one is data conversion which is found under common it sometimes it may be found here under other transformations but a common transformation is data conversion I'm going to drag and drop that here and this blue arrow connects to the next step if there is a success I could also create a process that if this step were to fail I could have it do something else for instance log to a table or log to a, a text file if it fails but in this case um, I'm, I'm working with a clean package that I've pre-tested so for the sake of training in this example we're just going to have it um, convert the data I'm going to uh, right here and I'll just call this step uh, transformation and I'm going to double click on this and this allows me to convert some of these data types now I know in my target data set I've got integers here for the source row ID I've got characters accepted in state and city but the rest of these are integers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform um, right here I'm going to transform 
I'm going to go ahead and just choose all of these. And the default is copy of. You could sort of rename this and say transform if you wanted. And instead of it being a, a string, I could make it an integer value. And I'm just going to say 4 byte unsigned integer. I, I have pre tested this package, for instance, uh, right here. I know um, right here I've pre tested this. So I have a control flow here that, that uh, converts the data. And I used 4 byte unsigned integers and I tested that. So the thought process here, when you change the data type, depending on how big the integers are you might have to change the size of bytes of integers and so right here um, for city remember we said the length should be a hundred so I'm gonna keep that there and I'm just gonna for the sake of clarity call these transformed versions and so forth and I'll just leave the rest of them copy, but it would be best practice to sort of name all of these. Now we know year. Year, we said, can be stored as an integer. So I'll just change the rest of these to um, four byte unsigned. And again, if these were to fail uh, for you, you would have to do some troubleshooting, but I already know that the data would fit inside of a four byte unsigned integer during the transformation process. Now oftentimes I recommend um, that if the transformation begins to fail at this stage and you're just really desperate to get the data inside of the database it's often a good um, what you can do uh, is just basically in the target right here in the staging make the fields uh, the columns all var car and give them a large size like 8000 and you know that the data will get imported into the staging table and then what you can do is perform your transformation later once the data is in the staging as a character so I'm going to continue here um, to change these to 4 byte unsigned and there's always a chance that I'm going to make a mistake here so I'll complete this process almost done and again if you're really struggling uh, in this phase during the import process and you're really struggling to transform the data at this stage you can you can always transform it after this step so in summary we're bringing all of the data in, we're transforming all of the data to integer values except the state and the city. We've accepted that the rest of it is a, uh, an integer of some kind. And so we see that, you know, based on our design, that will comply. So we're just going to say OK to that step. And as long as we don't have any warnings here, we're doing pretty good. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put the data into a destination here under other destinations. Since we're going straight into a database, we could choose SQL Server. I like to demonstrate this OLEDB destination because it is a, rel a relational database. And it's often good to show this tool. We could use, again, we could use SQL Server, but it works the same with SQL Server using the OLEDB destination. So here I'm just going to say load the data into SQL Server. And so I'm going to double click on this step. And it's going to say, all right, we need to make a new connection to your destination SQL Server. So we have one connection to our source data uh, CSV file. So I'm going to click on new here and click new and I'm going to be given an opportunity to define a connection to a server. In this case, we're using the SQL Server driver up here at the top. There are other drivers, which is kind of why I wanted to show you as an OLEDB step. Uh, because there, if you had other drivers installed on your uh, 
your your system such here's for Oracle and and an analysis services and other things there's access but we're just going to choose the default because we're working with SQL Server now my local host is my SQL Server is defined as local host and I'm going to choose the crime database now if yours doesn't work well with local host what you can do is if you come over here to management studio and you come up to the top and you right click and go to properties you will see here this is the actual name of your database your SQL Server instance mine is desktop and then this is my desktop name but I also know that because this is the default instance that SQL Server or localhost will work for me I then chose the database of my data mart um, that I'll be connecting to and then I'm just going to accept that connection it, it successfully uh, tested and it's added here as a local host and I'm gonna say okay and now what I can do based on that connection manager is I can choose the staging table from the drop-down now the last thing that we have to do once we have that connection and we know which table that the destination data is going to over here on the left there's this mappings and in the mappings we want to make sure that the data coming from the input column remember we did transformed versions so what we want to do is instead of choosing the state which was the original sort of version name of the column we come here and we go to transformed state for city we do the same thing transformed city and we've also got staging ID or not staging ID sorry row ID we want to leave um, staging ID alone because remember that is our auto generated identity column so I meant to say the row ID is in the source so the transform version of that we ignore state ID because again that's not from the source uh, data we want the transformed year or copy of year we didn't change its name copy of population copy of crime violent crime copy of murder and non copy of forcible rape copy of robbery copy of aggregated assault copy of property crime again these are the transformed versions copy of larceny theft where are you go oh copy of burglary sorry copy of larceny theft almost done copy of motor vehicle theft and copy of arson so in review we've got the transformed versions of all of our columns selected here on the left side of the tool we are ignoring the auto generated um, column in the destination table we're ignoring um, the state ID and the city ID we're also ignoring the year ID and so now that our mappings are complete we're going to say okay and as long as we don't have any warning right there um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first prepare a SQL query for our crime here and we're just going to say select all fields from crime dot and this is our uh, crime um, it's called the crime source um, data staging and to make sure we don't have any errors on that we'll execute notice we have no data there so we'll come back to our package here and I'm just going to right click out in space and as you're developing these you don't want to execute too many steps at once in the control flow tab it's better to go inside of a data flow tab right click and you can just execute this individual task and if you get an error it will tell you so we're going to right click and we're just going to execute that step and if we get an error we'll troubleshoot if we don't and everything is fine we see here that it has successfully uh, connected to the data source it transformed 25,683 rows 
and loaded them into the destination table. When that finishes, we hit stop. And then we go back to our management studio, re-execute this query, and notice that all of the data from the source CSV is now inside of the staging table. Also notice that the state ID column is still null, city ID is null, and the year ID is null, and the rest of the data has been populated. We also, our auto identity column has been populated. So next we'll look at how we work with the staging data to create our dimensions and our fact table.